Here we present a case of laparoscopic abdominal perineal resection following revascularization of the iliac vessels. The patient was a 63-year-old man with low rectal cancer located just above the anal verge. The most important problem was the presence of arterial sclerosis obliterans. As shown here, right-sided arterial occlusion was observed from the common iliac artery to the femoral artery. In addition, the left common iliac artery was also severely stenotic. Before cancer treatment, revascularization of the left iliac artery was performed. A vascular stent was inserted into the left common iliac artery. Furthermore, femorofemoral bypass surgery using an artificial blood vessel was performed from the left femoral artery to the right femoral artery. The tumor directly invaded the levator ani muscle, left side neurovascular bundle, and periosteum of the S5 sacrum. Although preoperative chemoradiotherapy reduced the size of the tumor, the tumor still remained to invade the levator ani muscle and periosteum of the S5 sacrum. We planned to perform a laparoscopic abdominal perineal resection with combined resection of the left side neurovascular bundle and the S5 sacrum. This is the 3D imaging. The right-sided iliac arteries are completely occluded, although the left side iliac arteries are maintained. This is the planned resection line of the sacrum. Considering the blood flow toward the urinary bladder, it was critical to preserve the superior and inferior vesicle arteries on the left side. First, we started the incision on the right side of the upper mesorectum. The loose fibrous layer between the mesorectum and prehypogastric nerve fascia was dissected. Ventral traction of the IMA pedicle extended the fibrous tissues behind the pedicle. Incision of the peritoneum was continued up to the root of the IMA. The root of the IMA was clipped and then divided. Following the mobilization of the left-sided colon, posterior dissection of the rectum was continued until the pelvic floor was reached. During the posterior dissection, pushing up the posterior side of the rectum extended the loose fibrous layer. The right hypogastric nerve was preserved. The left hypogastric nerve was divided, and then the dissection layer on the left side was changed to shift outside. The left ureter was retracted from the external iliac artery and further separated from the internal iliac artery. The dissection was continued along the medial wall covering the ureter and hypogastric nerve. Here, the superior vesicle artery was identified.
the internal iliac vein was identified. The inferior vesicle artery was also identified. Further dissection along this layer enabled the identification of the internal iliac vein and inferior vesicle vessels. At the bottom, the tendinous arch of the levator ani muscle was identified. The prehypogastric nerve fascia was divided. After lifting up the rectum, the S3 and S4 pelvic splanchnic nerves on the left side were divided. On the right side, the S3 and S4 nerves were preserved. The right side of the rectum was mobilized along the TME plane. This is the anterior side of the rectum. The seminal vesicle was observed. On the right side, the dissection was continued while preserving the S4 nerve branch and neurovascular bundle. The right side of the levator ani muscle was divided by electric cautery. The sacrum was divided to some extent using a soft coagulation method. The left side of the levator ani muscle was divided to obtain adequate surgical margins. This is the left side of the rectum. Dissection of the left side of the rectum was continued while preserving the superior and inferior vesicle arteries. After dividing the levator ani muscle, fat tissues in the ischiorectal fossa were exposed. At this stage, we divided the proximal sigmoid colon. Afterwards, the patient's body position was converted to the jackknife position. Next, we proceeded with the transperineal approach. The sacrectomy was performed at the level of S5. The left side neurovascular bundle was resected under direct vision. This is a final view from the transabdominal side. The pelvic autonomic nerves, the cut end of the sacrum, and the levator ani muscle were seen. Final pathology showed T3 N0 M0 stage 2A with negative resection margins. 
two weeks postoperatively, the patient was discharged without any adverse events. He underwent adjuvant chemotherapy, comprising an S1 plus CPT-11 regimen for three months. At 36 months after surgery, no recurrence or clinical symptoms were observed.